5 and 1 says, Be you therefore uh, followers of Christ, and we are to do it as dear children. Hmm. You ever think of yourself that way? That's all right. Think of yourself as a child of God, if you're born again, and also we are told to follow God and do it as a child would a parent in obedience. Now, this word followers of Christ or God also some translations use the word an imitator. You can imitate, the Bible tells us to, imitate God. You could also say copy God. Mm -hmm. Wow. You, you, did, you didn't know you could do all these things, did you? <laughs> well, the Bible says you can. You can you can imitate God. You, you can do it. And here's how you do it. You do it as a follower following His example. Now, Jesus came to this earth. And He came to show us the Father. Amen? Amen? That's what he did. He came to show us the Father. That was one of his express purposes, if you will. And if you want to know what God is like, all you have to do is follow in the Gospels, in the Word, what Jesus did. Whatever Jesus did here on this earth, is what our Heavenly Father is like in heaven. Isn't that good to know? So, uh, you know, we can follow Him. We can be obedient as a child, as it, as it says here, as dear children. Now, here is the thing that we need to be emphasizing in our lives as a Christian. We should highly value. Now we all probably have certain things that we value of, of greater than other things in our lives. We ought to highly value what God is as our Heavenly Father. That ought to be at the top of our list of things that we value. Now, when we talk about what God is, hmm, not, not necessarily just, you know, what God does, I'm talking about what God is, then we are talking about the very nature of, of God, a nature of what He is, and that's what I want us to look at this morning, and I want to use three words, and they all begin with the letter L. One is life, another one is love. And another one is light. Life, love, and light. And these are things that God is. Now, in the gospel, and we will be looking in the gospel of, and the writings of the apostle John quite a bit this morning. Now, in John chapter 14, is where Jesus made this statement to his disciples in uh, 14 verses, uh, uh, or I'm sorry, 
in 14 verse 6, Jesus said this, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man can come unto the Father but by me. That's what Jesus said here uh, concerning himself. Now, when God uses the term, I am, and he also can say, I am the great I am, (laughs) that's saying everything, church. That's not leaving anything uncovered that can be revealed. That's who God is. He is all sufficient. That's what he wants to be as our Father. All sufficient. He wants to be our everything. Every need can be supplied according to His riches and glory through Christ Jesus, right? He wants to be that I am in every one of our lives. So He is the way, the truth, and the life. Now, in the first chapter of the Gospel of St. John. I want us to start reading in verse 1. Now, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. Now, all things were made by Him and without Him, was not anything made that was made. Now, we're talking about creation here. We're talking about uh, the beginning where the, uh, the Word, before the Word was made flesh, we're talking about the beginning when God created the heavens and the earth, right? And the universe, everything was created. By Him. Now, here's what it says in verse 4. In Him was, here's that one letter, uh, word beginning with L, was life, right? In Him was life, and the life was the light of men. Now, being a believer in the Bible we do believe that God originated life. Amen? Okay. Now, go with me, if you would, to the book of Genesis, the book of beginnings here, and we're going to look in chapter 1, and um, it's going to talk about the creation. We're going to start in verse 20, and here's what, the account gives us of the creation. And this would be uh, uh, the fifth day, the second creative act. uh, It would talk about life. Amen? And here's what it said. And God said, Let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life. And the fowl, that may fly above the earth in the open firmament of heaven. Now, if you consider the earth, what what do we have here on earth? We have water that covers what about three fourths of the surface. We have land, and up above that surface of the earth, we have the atmosphere, right? And those are the three elements that makes up. Basically, the, uh, uh, the earth that we live on in, in that regard. So, God covered it all. He said, I'm going to put uh, uh, moving creatures in the, in the waters. I'm going to put fowl uh, in the air. And by doing so, um, that's called the open firmament of heaven, you know, the air above us. And it says in verse 21, God created great whales and every living creature that moveth, which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind, and every winged fowl after his kind, 
and God saw that it was good, and He blessed them, saying, Be fruitful, multiply, and fill the waters of the seas, and let the fowl multiply on or in the earth. Now, that was the evening and morning of the fifth day. Now, let me tell you something. God formed and made these whales, if you will, the birds that fly in the heavens. And He made them and gave them life. Amen? Now, the, He went ahead and talked about the... Uh, uh, in verse 24, and He said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature after His kind. And now we're talking about animals, right? We're talking about cattle, it mentions here. And creeping things, uh, the creeping thing. And the beast of the earth after his kind, and it was so. And God made the beast of the earth after his kind, the cattle after their kind, and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind, and God saw that it was good. Now, let me tell you something. Man has, and animals have, the capability of reproducing but they cannot create themselves. Understand? They cannot give their own species any kind of life. Life has to come from the one that has it, and that's God Almighty. Amen? Has to be. And uh, so we threw uh, all of this evolution stuff completely out the window, right? We believe that God gave life, and He gave it to the animals and all this. Now, here's the thing about man, the sixth day. What did God create then? It was man. And here's what it says in verse 26. Let us make man in our image and after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth, upon the earth and God created man in his own image and in the image of God created him male and female created he them he blessed them and said be fruitful multiply and replenish the earth now so we find here clearly stated in the Bible that God originated life man was Formed out of the dust or the ground, out of the clay of the, of the things in this earth. And man, no doubt, was formed, ever part of the body, just as we have a body today. But that man did not become a living soul until God breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. Amen? The breath of what? The breath of life. And that's how man became a living soul. Amen? Now, in regard to life, we find a statement made in the book of Acts chapter 17 and verse 28. Uh, a lot of people, there was philosophers and they were trying to figure out life and where everything come from and the beginning of everything, but they did agree on one thing, if they believed in God, they believed, and here's what the Bible says, in Him, in God, we live, we move, and we have our being. Now, it's in Him. I can't create myself, amen? I can't do anything that uh, requires my creation, all right? God did it. And we have to realize it's in Him that we emphasize as the giver of life. Now here's a good question. How much do we cherish life? Well, we, fee we find here on earth that life gets devalued in some people's ideas, right? Yeah, and you can talk uh, abortion, you can talk 
uh, euthanasia. You can talk a lot of things and said, well, life is losing its value in some people's eyes. But I'm here to tell you, if God gave it to you, you need to cherish it. Amen? You need to cherish your physical life sure need to cherish your eternal life. Amen. Hallelujah. So uh, those are the things. Life. Physical. The life that now is. And the life that is to come. All come from the giver of life. And, and you know that's what uh, Jesus said there. And, and you know the word tells us about how God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And now that's, uh, that's conclusive as it should ever have to be made and said that life is something that we need to uh, value uh, because it is part of God's nature that He's given His children. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, the other L, the next L, would be love. And I want us to uh, look at a few things here. First of all, in the, God, or the, uh, the epistle of 1 John chapter 4, if you will. And here it's talking about... Um, the family of God being in this world, but not of it, right? We're in it, but not of it. And here's what it says in 1 John chapter 4 and verse uh, 4. It says, you are of God, little children. Hmm. And also in that book of Acts over there where it read, you know, in Him we live and move and have our being. The last part of that says, and some said, well, now we're the offspring of God. You know, the old term, we're an offspring, right? Yeah, that's, that's what we are. We're little children. We are of God, right? Now, it says here um, that um, we are of God because, and we have overcome because of uh, uh, greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. Now, it goes on down in verse 7 and says this, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and every one that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. Okay? And he that loveth not, Knoweth not God. Now listen to this. For God is love. I really don't know of anybody else you could make that statement of. Other than God. Do you? Somebody said, well, can't you make it of uh, somebody or of yourself? Uh, well, no, I, I, I'm sorry. I can't always make that statement about myself that I'm just always love. Amen? Now, I tell you what, I, I know it's so important that we have to learn and practice. Now, this is something. You like to practice things? You can practice walking in love. Amen? You can. Because there's be times in your life that somebody will come up to you just trying to rub salt in your wound. Amen? They're wanting to irritate you, twist your nose, and poke you in the eye, or whatever else they want to try to do to you. And, and you know, you've got a choice right there to make. Am I going to walk in love, or am I going to walk in the flesh? Right? So, we have to do that. And, but God, this is what I like about it. This is our source. He is the source of life. He's also the source of our love. God does not have to practice walking in love like you and I. You know why? He's not walking around in this old flesh like we are. Amen? God's a spirit. Mm -hmm. And He is love. Hallelujah. 
So if you want to get the true definition of love and, and know how to walk, once again, get acquainted with your Heavenly Father. Amen? Because He'll lead you in the right path. God is love. Now, going back to the Gospel of uh, St. Matthew, let's look here in chapter 22, if you will. And we'll go all the way down to uh, verse 36. Matthew 22, verse 36. And uh, one of them, uh, you know, uh, a lawyer was tempting Jesus, saying, Master, what is the great commandment in the law? Well, and here's what Jesus says. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all of thine heart, with all of thy soul, and with all of thy mind. Mm -hmm. And he said, this is the first. And this is the great commandment. Amen? Did you know you can put all of God's commandments under this one greatest commandment? Somebody, I, I thought there's ten of them. Well, yeah, in the, under the law there was, you know, ten commandments that God gave to Moses. But let me tell you something, if you're walking in love, you're not going to go around breaking those ten commandments. Amen? So just emphasize the important one and walk in love, and you won't be going out here stealing somebody else's stuff, and, and the list goes on, murdering people and whatever else. You won't be doing that if you're walking in love. So... Get with a big one here. The walking in love. Amen. And then he said the second. They get two of them here. But the second is like unto this first one. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. In other words, if you're walking in love, the law cannot condemn you. The law of God cannot do it, right? He won't do it if you're walking in love. So that's how important it is. So we see here that love, and the Bible is many, many scriptures that we could use here, but uh, for the sake of time, I'm just going to kind of lay out some groundwork here. You can do the research later. But the Bible says, you know, God, sheds His love abroad in our heart. God freely will give you His love, right? And He'll shed it into your spirit man. And, uh, you know, we even know, church, that we've passed from death unto life when we start loving the brethren, right? That's it. And, and love, here, here's what I find about love. Love fulfills. Now, I'm talking about the God kind of love, right? Love fulfills. It fulfills the commandments of the law, right? It will fulfill you and every part of your life. Another thing, too, love never fails. Hmm? I said it never has failed yet. That's the reason I know God can't fail. Because God is love. Amen. God loves. He's never failed yet. Never lost a battle. He'll never lose one because he continues in love. Now, one other scripture on that before we go on. Uh, we find also John, the apostle, wrote this. That his love... Here's the good part of it. His love is perfected in us. So what's your love level? Amen? <laughs> Amen. Well, I've got room to grow and increase a little bit here. All right. Go to the perfectionist. Amen. Don't go to the person that's half full and say, you know, how do I do it? Go to the source that says, I can make you perfect in love. Does not the Bible says, be you 
perfect even as your Father in heaven is perfect. That's what the Bible says. But you know, I stumped my toe the other day and I hurt myself and I did this and I, uh, I made a bad decision. I done Okay, we're subject to those things. Here's the big question. Are you walking in love? If you're walking in love, I believe God puts His stamp of perfection on you. Amen? Now, there's no other way I could be perfect. You can't either. But you can if you walk in love. That's inside of God. Amen? You believe that? Or God wouldn't say it be you perfect if you couldn't attain something. So go to the source again of His love that will be perfected in us. Amen. God so loved the church that He gave Himself for it. No greater love hath any man than He lay down His life for His friends. Amen. God's already showed us the way to love. Amen. And it's not selfish, you know. It's unselfish love. Hallelujah. That's the agape love, right? All right. Now, the last word that I said starts with the letter L is light. Light, I've studied some on light. Light to me is one of the most fascinating things that I know of, right? Have you ever really considered light? Did you know it didn't take God very long in the creation to step right up and said, light be. <laughs> Amen. Let there be light. We know we need light. Light's so important. All righty. Let's go right back to John chapter 1 again. And we'll pick up on uh, <clears throat> some more things in this great first chapter here in John. Now, we left off. In verse 4, John 1 and 4, a while ago, didn't we? Where we read, in him was life. Now notice this. And the life was, and the life was the light of men. Hmm. Well, there's just something about that that makes me feel good. Amen? <laughs> what about you? And the life was... The light of men. And then it says here in verse 5, And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. And then it says, There was a man sent from God, whose name was John, and the same came for a, what? A witness, to bear witness of the light. Uh-huh that all men through him might believe. Now John was not that light, not this one we're talking about here, but he was sent to bear witness of that light. Now, verse 9, that was, what light are we talking about? There's only one true light. Now, I know we got light fixtures in here and things in this building. But when we're talking about light, church, I want to let you know that we are talking about something more than just illuminating something uh, where we can see it with our physical eyes. We're also talking about lighting the darkness that can be in a person's soul. Amen? You know what's the old song that we've heard for Ever since I was in church, I saw the light. Amen. I saw the light. No more darkness and no more night. Amen. So light will illuminate more than just the physical surroundings. It will illuminate spiritual things. Mm -hmm. And only one light can do that, and it is the true light, which is Jesus Christ. Amen? Because verse 10 says, He was in the world, and the world was made by Him, and the world 
knew him not. He came to his own. He came unto the Jews, right? And the Bible says his own, they did not receive him. But as many as received him, that includes us today, church, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Now, in John, we're right there, so go with me to John chapter 8. And let's go down to verse 12. John 8 and 12. And it says here that Jesus spake unto those disciples and says, I am the light of the world. There's that I am again, right? I am the light of the world. You know, why is the world in gross darkness today? It's because they've not come to the light. Uh huh. That's right. Gross darkness does cover our land. Why? Because the light's not shining. Something's going on in people's hearts. They don't. But Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me listen to this, shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. When did the light come on for you? When you decided to follow Jesus, the light come on. Hmm. Now, the light of life. That's the source right there, church. Now, let's go back and, uh, well, let's go to Matthew's gospel this time in chapter 5. And we will look beginning in verse 14. And, well, verse 13, you know, uh, uh, here's some similarities of the believer. And Jesus even called us the salt of the earth, right? And then in verse 14, he said this, You are the light of the world. Now, what did we just read over there in chapter 8? Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. Then he turns right around and says, You're the light of the world. (laughs) Amen. I like that, don't you? All of a sudden, I'm starting to become what... God's children ought to be. I'm a follower. Amen. I'm letting something happen inside of me that that God wants to do all along. Now, he said, You're the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid, neither doeth men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but put it on a candlestick, and it giveth light unto all that are in the house. Amen. Hallelujah. God did not save you for you to go hide. I I tell you what. There's times we may wonder, God, I just soon to stand somewhere in the shadows. I'm more comfortable in the shadows. You know what I'm talking about? But maybe God wants to push you right out in the light and expose you. You know, if you've got what the goods are inside of you. Let me tell you something. I believe God wants you to be put where? A light that will shine before men that they will see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't be afraid to let your light shine. Amen. This little light of mine. I feel like sometimes flickers even, but let that little light shine. Hallelujah. That men can see 
your good works that God does through you. And then that He will get glory in heaven. All right. Now, in Matthew, let's go ahead and pick this scripture up right now. In Matthew chapter 6, in verse 22, Jesus said this, that the light of the body is the eye, right? It's the eye that takes in the light. You can't see in pitch black darkness, can you? But when the light comes on, you can see, and you see it with your physical eyes. I mean, that's a natural explanation. But the spiritual explanation is this. Uh, it's talking about our spirit needs to not be evil. Listen, if the whole body, uh, if, your, if your eye, or the light of the body is the eye, therefore thy eye be single, or your spirit be single, then your whole body is going to be full of light. Now listen to this. I mean, this is good therapy. This is uh, medicine. Let me tell you something. This is medicine. Amen? It's spiritual medicine. It beats a pharmaceutical. Amen? It takes care of everything if will. Did you know Jesus is the bishop of our souls? He wants to be. Amen? People have problems with their souls. They have problems with their feelings. They have problems with their thinking. They have problems in, in that area so much. And here's the answer. The light of the body is the eye. In other words, the spirit. Jesus is saying in verse 23, If thine eye be evil, then your whole body is going to be full of darkness. And, and, and therefore, the light that is in thee is darkness. And, and how great is that darkness? But if your spirit is devoted totally to God and you're walking in love, then your soul can be full of light. Man, man. It's good. Mm -hmm. That's out of the Word of God too, by the way. Amen. Okay, here, trying to finish this up. What are we supposed to be as a believer? I told you, light's fascinating to me. I, I did a, a little bit of research on this. We have a sun goes overhead during the day, rises in the east, sets in the west, right? A sun, S-U-N. Now, that sun, 93 million miles away from earth, shines all the time. Did you know the sun shines through outer space? At the speed of 186,000 miles per second. Hey Amen. That's traveling on. That's light. Traveling from the sun. It takes about eight minutes for the light from the sun to reach earth. Amen. All right. How come with such a bright light out here called the sun that the whole universe is not lit up? How come? Here's how scientists explain it. Light goes a straight line. Now, if light hits something that has some significance, material significance, be atoms or whatever else, the light hits that, then the light scatters. Mm -hmm. Now, how come here on this earth we have sunlight but out in outer space, it's dark. How come that? Well, when the light from the sun hits the earth's atmosphere, it scatters. And we have light shining from the sun. Amen? That's what scientists say. I don't want to argue with them. I think they probably know. Amen? Okay, let's get it from the natural into the spiritual here.
it has to be reflected. Light needs to be reflected for other people to see it. What I'm asking you to do this morning, get your reflectors up. Amen. Get your reflectors up. Amen. I, I believe that the world is depending upon the believers to see the light. All right, where's my scripture for that? Okay. Yeah, it is found, once again, in the Gospel of St. John. And I want us to look in chapter 5, if you will. John chapter 5, and uh, we'll go down here, uh, or I'm sorry, let's go to Matthew, uh, yeah, Matthew chapter 5, and did we, we read all that, okay, it is John, I'm sorry, John chapter 5 verse 35, I got it now, okay. Here's what it says, Jesus speaking. Now he's talking about the witness of John the Baptist. All right. Here's what he says in John 5, 35. Jesus said of John, he was a burning and a shining light. Let your light so shine. That men can see your good works. In other words, let your light shine and then you're going to be a witness. Amen. Now listen to this. He was a burning and a shining light. And you were willing for a season to rejoice in His light. But I have greater witness than that of John, for the works which the Father hath given me to finish in the same works that I do bear witness of me that the Father hath sent me. Okay, here is what this scripture is telling us. The world walks in darkness. You will find that connected every time when it talks about the world. It's referring to darkness. Now the church, different story. The church is the light. Amen? The world is dark. Got that? And the only light, I believe the only light that a dark world is going to see is reflected light. The reflected light of a witness of a believer. Somebody said, well, the only book the world reads is your life. Well, basically the same thing. Amen? The world, if they sat down and poured over the Bible day in and day out, they'd get saved. Amen? The Holy Spirit would take care of the rest of it. People don't want to hear the truth of the Word if they're walking in darkness. Their deeds are evil. They don't want to be, you know, judged by that. So, we are the source of the reflecting of light. One more verse in that regard is in John, about ready to close here, John chapter 12, and I want us to look at two verses of Scripture, verses 35 and 36. Jesus said, Yet a little while is the light with you. Now he was talking to his disciples before he went to Calvary. He said, I'm going to be with you for just a little while longer. By the way, I'm the light of the world. already told you that, right? A little while is the light with you. Walk while you have light. Amen? Now, that just makes good sense in the natural, too. If you're out here stumbling around in the darkness, 
and uh, out in the woods or something, ain't no telling what you might fall into or trip over, right? But you walk, you know. The Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my pathway. Amen? So you have a spiritual application there too. So Jesus said, Walk while you have light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whether he goes. Amen? You're out here stabbing around in the dark. You don't know. Now verse 36. While you have light, believe in the light that you may be, there it is, the children of light. <sighs> Praise God. What's he telling us to do? Amen. Walk in it. And that's the only way, church, that we can let our little light shine. Hallelujah. Would you stand with me this morning?